Hi, this is Garth Holman, and today I'm going to uh, walk you through how to uh, build your first Pear Deck. Um, so Pear Deck is a program that is run through Google Docs, so I went to my Gmail. And in my Gmail, I'm going to go to my um, Drive. And when Drive opens, it's going to look like your normal Drive. Um, you're going to have to go over to Create, and you're going to connect to more apps. Um, actually, I already have Pear Deck here, but I'm going to run it through. So you go to connect to more apps and you search Pear Deck. Pear Deck should come up and you're going to add it. It's already in mine, so I'm just going to use what's there. And you're going to go ahead and click Pear Deck. Now the first time you do this, you're going to have to authorize your Gmail account to allow you to use it. If you have multiple Gmail accounts, you pick the account you'll be using most. But um, you just authorize and your students will have to do the same. So the first time you use a Pear Deck, it's, they must have a Gmail account to be able to access Pear Deck. Obviously, Pear Deck, is, there's a little video here you can watch. I'm not going to do that today. So you just, let's go. And so Pear Deck opens, and you basically notice down here you can import Google presentations or PDFs. Um, so you can upgrade from other programs you've already built. I'm going to show you how to build from scratch. So the first thing you do is you're going to add a new slide. And it's going to look a lot like PowerPoint. Um, and we're just going to call it Pear Deck for now. And then in Pear Deck, you can add a few things. So we'll take a look at images. When you click image, it's going to say, um, access your Google Drive. Understand you grant permission. And again, there's the authorization. Your kids might have to do that. They would do that before. You might have to. But at some point, you're going to have to do that. So Pear Deck, it's, it's just like Google. You can upload um, from your computer. You can look at images. You can Google images here. So we'll just try Pear Deck and see if it comes up. So there are no images. Let's just see if there's one for a pair. Whoops, not paired. Sorry. No images for pair. So might do a Google search for Pear Deck. And it still didn't find anything, so... Let's see if it comes up with a pair. Okay, it comes up with a pair. So I'll pick this one and select. It then uploads that image on your screen. Now you can do any image you want. You can take screenshots. You can upload them. You over on the right-hand side have this type of slide. The majority of the time you're just is a normal slide. That is presenting. It's a PowerPoint. There are two premium features. One is the draggable slide. Um, I love the draggable slide, but it's premium. There's the freehand draw, so you could ask your students to draw a social hierarchy or to show a reaction between chemicals or to do a math problem, and they can freehand draw. Again, premium. Um, then there's multiple choice slide, free response slide, and free number. So we're going to leave this one as is, and I'm going to add a new slide. This time I'm going to add a multiple choice slide. So, you know, you can then add your answers over here. Okay, you can have more answers if you want, but you're good to go. You will notice it doesn't appear here. It's not going to appear here because this will be pushed to your students. So when you send the slide in the presentation, what's my name, um, the students on their screen will have the multiple choice options and they will select one. Now, you can go on and add as many slides you want. I had a slide here that I didn't mean to add, so I'll just add something here you know, hello, and I want to add a YouTube video, you can add the YouTube URL, or you can go, you know, you can go out and search. So I want uh, YouTube, I'll go to my page, you can go to any YouTube you want. Uh, I'm going to do uh, the cause of exploration, and you grab the URL. When you go back to your Paradac, you paste that in, and it's going to appear this way. You'll notice over here it shows, but on the student, it's not going to project. They would have to watch it being presented publicly to the group, the left. And you'll see how this kind of works when we go to it. So I could add another slide, and I want them to do a number, or not a number, I should have done, uh, let's do one more slide. And I want a, a text response. So I get a new slide in. I don't like the order. You can drag them. Right, you can drag stuff around over here. 
So on this one, I'm going to write, um, you know, what? Okay, so you put a basic thing in, good to go. I can add a list if I want, so I could add bulleted items like trips, you know, add another item, um, family. Now, the reason I might put these here is I might want that to be projected up on the screen, and now I'm getting a Skype call. So, <laughs> uh, let's ignore that for now. And the reason you might do this is it gives kids ideas. Talk about trips. Talk about what you did with your family. Talk about your friends. So you can project up on the main screen of your classroom ideas you want the kids to think about. And then they're going to be, um, their screen will just show a box to present on. And I'll try to show you this as we're going. Now, I can keep adding as many slides as I want. That's not the cool part about this. The cool part is what you can do with it once you've built it. So I'm going to name this just the test um, for TFT. It's been renamed. So I'm going to start my presentation. And what you would do is you'd be projecting this in the classroom. So you get three options of how you want to project. You can, well, again, a premium option. You can upgrade on your projector view or you can use the student view. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the, the projector view so you won't see what it looks like for the kids, but I'll try to open it on another page. So this screen would appear up on your, um, through your projector on your whiteboard or whatever you might be using. So while I'm talking here, I'm going to, I'm using my cell phone, and I'm going to actually go to that address, and I'm going to join Pear Deck on my phone so that you can see what's going on here. So I almost got this done. So another thing about Pear Deck you might want to know. Pear Deck works on cell phones, it works on iPads, it works on tablets, it works on Chromebooks, it works on MacBooks, it works on IBMs. It's a web-based program, so it'll work on anything that has access to the web. So I think I got it. Let's see. You will now notice at the bottom of the screen it says one student joined. So you can't see my cell phone, but I got it on. So I'm going to start my presentation. So I use the cursor here to present. And it now shows a Pear Deck. So on my cell phone, um, which um, I will take screenshots of and add those and call them screenshot one, two, three, I'm going to take a screenshot of my cell phone, which I just did. And there's nothing I'm talking, I'm going on. And then the hello. Now, I'm going to also take a screenshot um, of this, but there is no video on my cell phone. So when I push play, this would play on the large screen in the classroom, but students wouldn't see it on their individual computer or cell phone or iPhone. They would have to watch the main screen. Okay, so we watch the video, and I move on. Now it says, what's my name? So you will see I'm going to select from the multiple choice. I'm going to click on mine. Um, my answer's in. And you have some controls down here. You can show student responses. You can lock student responses. When I lock student responses, I'm going to take a screenshot of that on my cell phone. And then I can show them. So I can see that one person answered Mr. Holman. This is a great way to get formative assessment on what you're talking about. If you were unsure, I could ask again. Now my cell phone shows it again. This time I picked Mr. Armstrong on my cell phone. I open it up. Now it's Mr. Armstrong. So we could talk about why that's wrong. You will notice it says awaiting responses. I did not lock the students. So the student could change their answer, which I'm going to do. And you notice that went to Mr. Pennington. And now I can change it on my cell phone, and it's going to go to Mr. Holman. So it allows kids to change their answers. I can lock that. Now they cannot change their answers. Then it comes to the last screen, and it says, what did you do this summer? Now I'm going to take a screenshot on my cell phone again. I just did. And on my cell phone, I'm going to write um, trip on house boat. Now, I posted that. There is a post button on my cell phone. I click it. It posts to there. When I look, I got one response. I can lock my kids' responses. Or I can just show them. So it'll load all the responses. Just like my cell phone said, it comes from my cell phone right in. So now I can um, get 
constant feedback as I'm presenting information to my students right through Pear Deck. I can also say, hey guys, quick question. Do you think that this is some cool software? And the kids can drag and we can show responses. No, I don't think, because I didn't lock it. So now I can move my answer. Okay. Oh, wait, another question. A, B, C, do you think this is worth an A, B, or a C grade? Oh, this is pretty cool, so that's my grade. I look, you can see the grades are submitted by your kids. So you don't have to have a formal presentation ready. You can have four slides and then ask 50 questions off these quick things. Now let's see if the draw will work. They said that's a premium feature. Now on this one, I'm going to draw the state of Ohio for you because I have premium in my account, so it must let me. So, oh, that's pretty bad. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. It's pretty bad, but I'm going to show you. You can draw pictures directly on your cell phone or your iPad to show states. So I could ask again. And I could say, you know, how, no, I'm not going to ask that. When's your birthday? And so now I hand wrote my birthday, 2371. And every kid could do that, and you can see their response, responses. Now, if you don't have the premium features, you wouldn't be able to do the, the um, drawing, nor could you do the draggable. Now, it might let you do it with the agree, disagree. I'm not sure on the free version if it does. So do you think that's a good choice to make a premium? Oh, no, I disagree. It should be free. Well, they got to make money somehow. It's a pretty impressive piece of software. Now, what's really cool is when you're done with this, um, I can switch views. So I'll go to a student view, and we'll go back a couple slides so you can see what it looks like. Uh, did I go to student view or no? Let's see what view I'm in. And it's not letting me click to switch to student view, but you go. Um, again, you're asked quest questions. You can ask again. So on any page, if you um, were to ask, let's say, this one, and you said, oh, these aren't good enough answers. Let's talk about river valleys and why people live there. You can ask again, and it will re-kick the question out, and they can respond again. Um, another thing that's kind of cool about it, if you unlock your students, I can say a new answer on my cell phone. And I can say with, oops, maybe I can do this on my cell phone. Sorry, I'm not the best texter. Well, and if you've watched me type, I'm not the best typer either. Okay, I can click return done. I can post, and you should see that it crossed out my trip on the houseboat and added with my family. So you can actually have kids, you can see how they're changing their answers as well. When you end the session, it says, do you want to save this? So I can save this as test one answer, and I'm going to end the session. I will go back to Pear Deck, so I'm back to a normal thing. So again, if you have eight classes, let's say, I can start presenting, um, and it's going to ask me at some point, and maybe I need to go back and open instead of doing it that way. But you can actually um, open up the session you started, and you can pick off. So if you or pick it up where you left off. Um, so I could go back in. I could use it for three or four days. Um, and you do have some options over here. I could start my session where I left off, and it will automatically. Uh, see, that's a premium feature. So that's up to you. But it was nice that you could actually pull them up. You can import five free slideshows for the free version versus the upgraded. So this kind of gives you an overview of it. It doesn't go through every single thing of it, but it gives you an overview of how Pear Deck can work. Um, I hope you do use it, and I hope that you, like here's the unnamed session, you can see the answers, and we have all that information. We're now in a different view, by the way. We're in the what's called the, this is the student display, what's projected on the screen, and then you can see all the answers over here. So we may be getting a few glitches in the answers and how it's working right now, but I do have two accounts, so that might be the reason why. But again, you can see the power of Pear Deck. So as we close out, and we can exit or export our answers to a Google spreadsheet. I'm not going to do that at this point. Um, you can close out. You go back to your Google Docs that you were in. If 
I reload the page, okay, I should have, oh, I'm in the wrong Gmail account, sorry. There's my test. Um, so when I open it, there's no previewer. I open up Pear Deck. I'm back in it. I can now edit, add more slides. I can build. So let's go. I shouldn't have to reauthorize. I add a new slide. I want to add a text block, and now I can keep building on this slideshow. So you don't have to finish it all at once. It automatically saves through the Google format. So with that said, that's a brief overview. Um, please leave some comments about how you're using it and how it works for you. If you have questions, you can ask, and I'll try to get answers left to you as well. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day. Choose to be awesome.